What they're saying, Jean? Caught doing a little four-poster work? Pants down and his hand in the till? That or his hand in his pants. <laughs> Either way, it doesn't look good. Not with her. Yeah. Him and half the cabinet. In search of a little French polishing to restore the luster to their faded woodwork. You don't believe it, do you? I mean, what about his wife? Well, he keeps her in a shed, doesn't he? Throws her 20-year-old newspapers. <laughs> oh, she'll probably stand by him again. Not that anything's been proved, of course, but I wouldn't be at all surprised. And you've uh, heard the other one that's doing the rounds? Oh, that is rubbish. I mean, where would he get the time, for one thing? He's my secretary. Oh, well, of course, that puts him above suspicion. I mean, Ken, that if Mark were spending his days having illicit legovers in Palace Yard, I'd have noticed. <laughs> anyway, he lives with his girlfriend. Jean, if everyone with a cooker is eating at home, how come there's so many restaurants? <laughs> Celtic proverb? Who's he supposed to be having this affair with, anyway? Oh, with a woman. MP. No. What, Labour? Why, did you think he was infiltrating the enemy? <laughs> so who are they saying? Not... No, 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 no. Don't mean... No, no, she's too... No, no. Yes, that's what I would have thought. <laughs> then who? You. <laughs> Me? With my... <laughs> I'm old enough to be his elder sister. <laughs> Honestly, you think they'd have better things to do with their time. Oh, Mark, have you heard this? People are saying you are having an affair. Me? Really? Who with? With me. Isn't that absolutely ridiculous? Ha ha ha! What? Good God, yes, I mean, good God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stranger things have happened. No, 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 no. I didn't mean that. I just meant. I've brought some papers for you to sign. Well, I'll do them on the way over. You come along with me. Oh, if it gets any worse, Mark, you can always claim sexual harassment. He likes it. Come on, Marky. <laughs> All these allegations, Roland, are totally unfounded. Insider dealings. Why, I would no more betray a position of trust than uh, I would. No, quite. Absolutely. I know that I've uh, made the odd 50 or 60k out of the deals, but I was going to buy the shares anyway. So did I. Oh, how much did you make? £12.50. <laughs> Not so serious in your case, then. And uh, as for this other matter, I, I've never met the woman. I don't really know her either. Oh, you too. Oh, and if we did have dinner together, which we might have done, after all, you can't remember everybody you dine with, can you? It certainly wasn't more than a couple of times. A very intelligent woman and stimulating companion. I thought she was, too. Yes, she was. Very stimulating. Intellectually. <laughs> yes, but that's all there was to it. Finish. Or possibly we took a taxi somewhere and then went up for a cup of coffee. I don't know. Or perhaps uh, she was too late to go home. <laughs> And surely, that's what friends in a spare bedroom are for. Just what I said, Godfrey. And if I'd had the smallest inkling that she had any contacts with the Iraqi Secret Service, I wouldn't have given her the time of night, uh, day. <laughs> no, nor me. Now, it's a storm in a teacup, if you ask me, Godfrey. It's a muckrake, Roland. It's the opposition making cheap political capital. It's a pollution of the pristine waters. Christine who? Sorry. <laughs> Christine Waters, Roland. And the fact that I was on the uh, Select Defence Committee at the time, <laughs> I think that's irrelevant. Yes, yes. Just because a man happens to tell a girl a few things, in confidence. Oh. So you marked her card, then? I thought it was pretty well marked already, to be honest, Godfrey. <laughs> yes, I thought it was somewhat dog-eared myself. <laughs> <laughs> However, naturally, I've explained everything to my wife. Ah, got hold of a newspaper, did she? Yes, and she uh, appreciates that it was a malicious slur. And fortunately, she's standing by me again. <laughs> I suppose Laura's taking it in much the same sort of spirit. She's gone to her mother's for a few days, actually. She's taken the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, these things blow over if you sit them out. I don't think it's a resigning matter. Do you? Let's hope not, no. No. So you're not resigning, then? Well, do you think we should? 
You're not serious. That's what they're saying. Down in Soho, in an amusement arcade. Caught around the back of a Space Invaders machine. <laughs> but I'd no idea he was... Well, no, he did. No, not an inkling. But hasn't he got... Two of them, yes, and one underway and two from his previous, and she wasn't his first either. <laughs> but if only he'd been open about it to start with. Oh, this is the thing about politics, you see, Jean. The only way to survive having something to hide is not to hide it. But then if you don't hide it, everyone finds out about it, and that's just as bad. <laughs> so what's going to happen? Well, we'll have to take stock, maybe do a bit of damage limitation. After all, we are the party of live and let live. But at the same time, we can't have that sort of thing going on. No, so you're going to ask him to resign his seat? Well, that's not up to me. And uh, nobody wants a by-election just at the moment. But he might have to give his gongs back. <laughs> and uh, vacancies could soon be arising in the shadows of the shadow cabin. Vacancies? Really? I, I expect you know about Harry on security, don't you? No. Oh, all very sad. Very sad indeed. <laughs> Hello, Harry. Miss Price. Oh, um, Harry, I just wanted to say, well, um, we're thinking of you. It's very nice of you, Mrs. Price. And I know there's not anything any of us can do, but, well, a few of us got together and we bought you this pen. Oh? So you can always write to us. That's very nice of you, Mrs. Price, but no, I don't really know. It's okay, Harry, don't worry. I know how difficult these things can be, but um, all the best anyway. Thank you. And to you. Ah, oh, Harry. Oh, hello, sir. Just wanted you to know we haven't forgotten you. That's very nice of you, sir. We feel what you feel, really. I'm very glad to hear it, sir. Anyway, a few of us got together and we, we bought you a little something. Oh, it's very nice, you said. There's really no need for that. No, just you take it, Harry. And you know where we are if you need us. Well, good luck then. And keep your spirits up. That's the main thing. Thank you, sir. <laughs> good luck to you. I just felt, Jean, out of courtesy as my pair, that I owed you a small explanation. So, in other words, you're brazening it out, Godfrey. Well, I just want to clarify some things that you may have heard. Certain whispers, oh, Sheen, were. I don't pay attention to Chinese whispers, Goffrey, and I try not to listen to gossip. No, so I've heard. Neither do I. Obviously, sometimes it's unavoidable, but I take what I hear with a large pinch of salt. Oh, yes, me too. It's always good to keep the crew at handy. <laughs> but you might have been hearing some vague rumours about me. Nothing specific. You mean the allegations about your insider dealing and having it off with a call girl, do you? <laughs> Along those lines, and I just want to reassure you, Jean, that those are totally scurrilous allegations. I see. So they're all true. And now that I've set your mind addressed about that, I know that you would no more entertain allegations like that about me than I would believe them about you, for example. There's no truth in that at all, Godfrey. Mark has only ever been my secretary, and we have a strictly business relationship. Just what I said, Jean. I said she pays his wages, that's all. The fact that she spends more time with him in the office than she does with her husband at home has nothing at all to do with it. Everyone spends more time here than they do at home. Exactly. It's the same with me and this woman who I'm supposed to have had these under-the-duvet dealings with. It was, it was a perfectly normal business relationship. You mean you got a receipt afterwards? <laughs> I mean, Jean, you and I are the victims of exactly the same smear tactics. Oh, I hardly think so, Godfrey. I don't know who started the rumours about me, but it's a well-known fact that you made 10,000 out of those shares. Uh, nowhere near that much. I just want to tell you that I wasn't going to make any political capital out of this. I mean, questions in the House, like should Labour MPs and their secretaries be allocated offices with double beds? I wasn't going to ask. Oh, very kind of you. That shows exemplary self-restraint. But should questions like that be asked about me, I would be forced to retaliate. Fine. Yes, I get the picture. It's a sort of blackmail, is it? No, it's more a backmail. You stab my back and I'll stab yours. You don't intimidate me, Goffrey. And don't think I wouldn't stab you in the back if I had to, because I would. In fact, the only thing that deters me right now is there's such a long queue. Oh, do you know who else is in it? <laughs> oh, gee, there you are. Oh, hello, Liz. You know this shadow cabinet, then? Oh, you've, um, heard, have you? Yes. Do you think there will be resignations? Oh, it's 
seems possible, why? I just wondered whether you'd be putting your name forward for anything. Oh, why, were you interested at all? Why, did you think you might be standing then? Oh, I've hardly been here long enough for that. Though, of course, if people felt I should. It's just if you were looking for support in your area of specialisation. Oh, well, if you wanted support for the other position, I'd be only too happy, yes. Obviously, nothing's definite yet. They may not even resign. But if there was a certain amount of pressure... From the back benches? Yes. If people felt that they should go and were prepared to sign something. Uh, shall I see about it later? Right, yes, OK. okay. No sadder sight, Harry, is there, than two women conspiring in a corner? Flies in the face of sexism, doesn't it? Have to move with the times, eh, sir? Yes. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry to hear about, uh, you know. My brother-in-law had a similar thing, but he's over it now. He goes scuba diving, uh, flippers and all. So, it's an ill wind, every cloud and that. I mean, what's a pecker for if it's not for keeping up? Press on, then. Cheerio. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jean, I won't support it. Why not? Everyone else we've asked does. We've got 90 signatures. Well, you won't have 91. I think they ought to stand down, surely. Well, that's their business. I mean, I'm not custodian of the public morals, am I? Anyway, why should politicians be expected to behave any better than the people they represent? There is such a thing as discretion, Ken. This reflects on the whole party. Oh, not on me, it doesn't. We're supposed to be the party of tolerance. If you want tolerance, you have to tolerate. Anyway, what about uh, Liz, your partner in levering people out of their jobs? What about her? Oh, she's having an affair. Is she? I didn't know that. Oh, <laughs> well, it was common knowledge. So, are you going to hound her out of the Women's Steering Committee, then? Well, it's probably just gossip. Anyway, what Liz is or isn't doing is not the point. Oh, no, obviously she's a woman, so that's all right. And what does that mean? I mean, she couldn't possibly be a home wrecker or in it just for the nookie. It's only men that do that. <laughs> It's not a bit on the side for our Liz, is it? No, it's Mills and Boone and the earth-moving contractors. But a woman has an affair, it's a love story. When a man does, it's just a commotion in his underwear. What are you protesting so much about? Ah, oh, it just gets me, that's all these double standards. I don't see what an MP's private life has got to do with his public one at all. But it does, though, Ken, doesn't it? Because people do not like their MPs preaching what they don't practice. Yeah, but they were practicing what they don't preach. That's different. <laughs> anyway, I bet most people signed that because they thought that if there are any jobs going in the shadow cabinet, they might get one of them. Didn't you? Yes. And what if I did? I think I have the experience and the knowledge to make a good candidate. Yes. Jean, I am surprised at you. Oh, so it's all right for men to be ambitious and manoeuvre to get on. That's manly and heroic. But when a woman does it, she's a pushy cow. Now he's got double standards. Excuse me. <laughs> Jean, time for a word? Oh, uh, what about? Well, now there, Jean, we've always got on well together, haven't we? Have we? When did this happen? Oh. Well, I'd say we've built up quite a rapport since you've been here, yes. Brother and sister describes it, really. Houses on fire doesn't put it too strong. Oh, is that so? <clears throat> so anyway, how's the baby? He's 26 and living with air hostess. <laughs> oh, yes, must be a credit to you. Yes, seems like only yesterday, but the family as well and your grandmother. Yes, yeah, she's still dead. Thanks for asking. <laughs> well, as long as you've got your health, that's the main thing. Huh? Are you taking a holiday again this year, I expect you? It's not impossible. Oh, you will be off to Malta again, I expect. I've never been there. Oh, well, that's nice. You deserve a break. I must say, Norman, I never realised before what an accomplished practitioner you were in the art of conversation. <laughs> oh, I can have a chat when the need arises. You see, the thing is, Jim, most people, they only see my whipping side. They don't see the real Norman, the Norman inside. Norman the gardener, Norman the piano accordion enthusiast, Norman with his collection of antique napkin rings, Norman the family man. How is the family, Norman? Oh, I still have access to weekends. <laughs> The thing is, Jean, I can count on your support, then, can I? For what? Well, you know, rumour has it. Resignations imminent, positions vacant, candidates aspiring, need I say more? And which particular position are you interested in, Norman? Oh, my usual field of operations. 
Oh, I see. Shadow Minister for Flatulence, then. <laughs> oh, yes, very good. I like a woman with a sense of humour. Well, I understand that you're after one, and uh, Liz is interested in the same one as me, but uh, you don't back a loser. You latch your car to a rising star. Could do you a bit of good. Oh, I can hardly do an about-face like that, Norman. I've pledged her my support. Oh, pledged it. Oh. Well, um, a half-promise, in a way, if that... You mean you might have said something which she mistakenly took as vaguely hinted in a non-committal way? Well, I'm not sure how she interpreted it, but um, what was the proposal exactly? Well, it's just that if it comes to a showdown of hands, you can count on my support. If I... Oh, hello, Liz. How are you, love? So nice to see you. Hi, Norman. Jean? Hello, Liz. See you later. <laughs> how much support are we talking about exactly? It's just a rumour, Jeff. You don't know that they're going to cut your grant and close down the law centre. Of course they will. They're looking for cuts and I'm prime material. Yes, but you don't know it's that bad. <sighs> no one wants you when you're old and useless. Oh, you're not old and you're not that useless. <laughs> Joke? And I still want you? Yes, but nobody who matters does. Oh. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I've ceased to be a person in my own right. I'm just the bloke who's married to the MP. It's like being someone's wife. Oh, must be bad. <laughs> All right for you. You've got prestige, self-esteem. What have I got? A vacuum cleaner and a part-time job. And that won't last much longer. It'll either be me or the lesbians. Oh, surely they'll lose their grant before you lose yours. Uh, I wouldn't be so sure. I'm on my own. There's two of them. <laughs> To think I gave up a thriving practice to go and work in this law centre. You were sick of it. You said yourself you were tired of being a solicitor. You wanted to go off and do something useful instead. Well, I don't think I put it quite like that. You know you shouldn't believe what you read in the papers. Said so on the television. <laughs> well, you can always live on my money. Well, yes. Well, what would you live on? Oh, you ain't then, Jean. Not going for a drink in an all-night sitting. No, I think I've had enough of the futility of human endeavour for one day. Thanks, Ken. Well, see you tomorrow for more futility. Bye. Night, night. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Hmm. <laughs> oh, hello, Jean. <laughs> Anyway, I am not your mother, Mark. I'm your employer, and your private life's your own affair, so let's say no more about it. No, right. What about your girlfriend, anyway? You live with her, Ben, say? You won't tell her. Of course I won't. It's not my business to sit in judgment, so we'll say no more about it. Did you even bother to think of her and how she might feel? I didn't do it deliberately, Jean. It was just one of those things. One of what things? Well, one of those things that you hear about. And it isn't as if it affects my performance. I beg your pardon. Oh, look. I should hope not. I'm with an MP, too. I mean, I have to work with a woman and you're sleeping with her. What do I say when I meet her husband? Hello, I'm Jean. My secretary's the milkman. I'm sorry, Jean. It's, it's difficult enough for me already. I don't sleep. I feel sick most of the time. Well, let's hope she's not feeling sick. Do you want me to resign? No, just keep out of my sight for a few hours. At least. Right. Hello, hello, hello. And how's the team today? All bright-eyed and raring to go? Excuse me. You knew. Thought it was just a rumour. Uh, Norman? Yes, Jean, can I help you? Um... About this shadow cabinet thing, I've been having second thoughts. What shadow cabinet thing is that, then? You know, the imminent scandal, the resignations. What resignations? We were talking about it just the other day. Oh, that? Oh, no, it's all blown over, that. All old hat, that is. Wouldn't keep your ears warm. What? No, no truth in it at all, apparently. A mistaken identification. You know how these things get about. You mean they won't be standing down? Well, there's no reason why they should, is there? Unless you know something I don't. But I thought you and I were going to support each other. Who said that? You did. Did I? Oh, well, maybe so. But I mean, I got a lot on my mind, Jean. Things change. 
shifting sands of the Sahara here, isn't it? No, I wouldn't believe everything you hear in this place. Even when you say it, Norman? Oh, especially when I say it. <laughs> I suppose you've heard about the uh, MI5 business then, Godfrey? Yes, I have, Reverend, yes. Couldn't have come at a worse time, really. Well, it couldn't be better for us. How's that? Well, if they're talking about that now, they've forgotten about us. Oh, uh, yes. Funnily enough, I had a visit from Laura last night. Oh, jolly good. Bring back the furniture, did she? No, she came back for the carpets. <laughs> Rice. Mm. I wanted to say I'm so glad it all worked out. You must be very relieved. Oh, yes, yes. We're all very happy for you. Oh, and uh, keep the pen. I will. Thank you. Hi, Ken. Oh, hi, Jean. Uh, Jean, this is uh, Mona. Mona, this is Jean, who I share the office with. Hello. Oh, hello, Jean. Nice to meet you. Just down to see himself for a couple of days. I will just off for a wee spot of lunch. See you. Bye. Okay. Nice to meet you. You too. Bye. Hello, Harry. How are you, sir? Fine, thanks. Meant to say, heard the good news. We're all very pleased. So load off your mind, I dare say. Yes, sir. Yes. Hmm. Well, keep the tankard. I will, sir. Thank you. Have a pint for us. I'll drink to your health, sir. Right, yes. <laughs> Why? Had you heard there was something wrong with me? <laughs> and apparently, Jean, the thing is... Look, I'm sorry, Mark, but I don't want to hear about it. Uh, it's rather on the doorstep, Jean. I don't care if it's wiped its feet, come inside and is sitting watching television. I have heard all the rumours I want to hear for the next 2,000 years. Now, let's get on. Come in. Oh, hello. I'm sorry to disturb you. Is this Ken Miller's office? Yes, but he's over at the house at the moment, having lunch with his wife. His wife? I'm his wife. 